hello guys welcome back to the channel so today i am just making a video to talk about a historic storm that we had here in the middle of april 2022 so everything began just about uh, a day and a half two days ago when we had these uh, snow flurries and you can see uh, there wasn't much snow on the ground everything had actually been gone but here is just about 30 minutes after the snow started uh, falling we already had an advisory for uh, adverse weather weather uh, there was high wind advisories uh, with uh, possibility of having wind gusts up to 50 miles per hour and uh, up to 21 inches of snowfall so here we are just getting braced up for the uh, storm and we made adequate preparations you know uh, they advised everyone to get some food water make sure you had supplies at home and uh, just bunker down and be safe also uh, they had everyone you know monitor the emergency radio channels and also uh, keep tabs with uh, loved ones in case they were out here on the central to the western part of uh, North Dakota and also the eastern part of uh, Montana and the northern part of uh, northwestern part of uh, South Dakota. Also, uh, the central south of Canada was equally affected. So what happened actually was there was this huge system that pretty much uh, stayed over the state of North Dakota, like, uh, the areas I just described, and uh, it lingered there for close to 48 hours. And uh, it was relentless, it just dumped snow, and uh, you also had uh, high winds, which made it very treacherous. So this is after about 24 hours after the snowfall began. Uh, here you can see the initial amounts of snow that, were, that was already dumped. And uh, the way the snow drifts, you would notice on the windward side, it's usually uh, where you have a lot of the snow being dumped. Uh, wherever the wind speed drops, you know, then the snow uh, particles, they, they get dumped. So uh, for the most part on the windward side, you might not find as much snow than when uh, the snow goes around the object blocking the path. Uh, the speed slows down, kind of like a venturi effect. And as the speed of the wind slows down, it dumps all the snow that it's carrying. So it uh, continued like this, very high winds from the northwest uh, heading down south. Uh, bringing in a lot of snow you can see behind the vehicles uh, how much we had uh, as snow drifts after 24 hours and uh, that was not all because uh, the following day the snow uh, continued to fall even heavier and uh, it was really really a bad time luckily we did not have any power outages uh, temperatures were really mild uh, during the day they were in the uh, high teens low 20s and at night that's when they dropped a little bit further down the teens as you can see there i had the rocks all packed outside and uh, luckily for me i had another vehicle in front of the rock source so as the snow was being dumped it did not accumulate in front of the rocks or uh, those obstacles kind of made a uh, the wind had to squeeze itself so the wind speed picked up between the vehicles and uh, it was at the back of the very last vehicle that the wind speed dropped enough to dump all the snow so here you can see how much snow i had blocking the doorway uh, gonna try to make a way out that's the second time i had to clear it the first time i had to use a shovel <laughs> and now i just kicked it because i was just going to take a quick look outside and you can see the fury of the wind not a single soul to be found outside and uh, just to be clear uh, back in the day it's uh, these uh, blizzards are very dangerous so you could leave your house and say you are going maybe 
a hundred feet to the barn to pick check on something pick up something and you start walking and before you know it you lose your bearings and you once you lose your bearings and you can't see where the houses are it's a very very bad uh, situation you know you you could easily uh, find yourself in a very precarious situation very quickly uh, you can see for example here the building that you have in the background the story building um, you just need to go a little bit further and you look you won't be able to see it so that's where the danger comes from with uh, these blizzards out in the plains so when you have a blizzard uh, back in the day people would actually run like a cable or a string from their homes all the way to the barn or the garage or wherever they had to go to that way in case they got lost they could hold the string and uh, find their way back home so you never took chances you held on to that string and you walked following the string back home or to the barn or to the garage or wherever you had to go so this is the end of uh, the first day you guys can see how bad it is um, I had the vehicle stuck right there so I just abandoned it and uh, I knew I'll be back for the after the storm is gone so this is after the storm uh, all those ridges the drifts that you see there they are really good now you can see the contours but uh, in low poor lighting conditions which is typically the case when you have a uh, blizzard you can't see all those uh, snow drifts and how tall they are so that's how people get stuck and that's how people uh, lose their bearings and find themselves in ditches so um, w the other thing about these uh, snow drifts especially after blizzards or extremely heavy snow fall is that people get into heavy equipment and then they start clearing out the snow it is very important that you know the area and how things are placed before you start plowing uh, because you have uh, utilities that are placed all over uh, all over the area uh, you could have uh, fire hydrants you could have uh, power outlets it is extremely extremely dangerous clearing snow so you always need somebody with local knowledge who has seen the terrain before the snowfall and they know where uh, dangers, uh, pos potential dangers could be located. So here, uh, like I said, I was stuck and this is the path that was cleared out with the Bobcat. Uh, the Bobcat is a little uh, utility equipment that it, you can put on different attachments and it's very, very uh, useful, especially out here on farms and uh, even in garages and businesses it is used for heavy lifting and uh, it makes easy work of uh, what would essentially have taken a gang of men you know working a whole day uh, you can see there you have one very skillful uh, operator and uh, just by himself the amount of work he accomplishes with the bobcat is really really impressive back there you have a snow blower and that works with a pto which is a power takeoff so you uh, connect the pto the power takeoff uh, to the snow blower which is an attachment that you have uh, and you hook it to the back of the tractor uh, here you have a green and yellow tractor so i believe it is a john deere tractor and uh, the operation is pretty simple you can uh, use the uh, hydraulic controls to lift the um, snow blower as high as you want it or as low as you want it uh, but this road is a very well uh, cared for road so it's level and that way they can really take the uh, snow blower very close to the ground if you have it up too high then you have a the chance of leaving snow that's thick enough to uh, get vehicles that don't have four-wheel drive or snow tires uh, stuck so it also needs a skillful uh, a skilled operator to not damage the snow blower itself if you're pushing it too close to the ground then you start picking up big rocks and uh, they can cause some damage to the equipment so here is the bobcat uh, the bobcat was developed in North Dakota uh, in the early 60s I would say 
and uh, now it's pretty much a mainstay every single major farm around here has one uh, because when the snow falls uh, you know life has to continue and uh, bobcats are a mainstay because uh, they clean the road from uh, the farmstead all the way to the main road and also if you have uh, cattle out in the pasture you can use the bobcat to clear a path out to go uh, feed the cattle and make sure that they have water in case of heavy snowfall. So it's a very uh, versatile piece of equipment and uh, they are manufactured I believe in Bismarck, North Dakota. Uh, Bismarck is the state capital of North Dakota so they have a uh, factory over there where they manufacture these uh, bobcats. Since uh, the bobcat was first made and patented, uh, they took out a patent, I believe uh, a, many other companies, you know, you have Case, for example. I know for a fact they also make something similar. And um, bobcat has also diversified, so they make uh, like what they call the toolcat, which uh, is a much more it has steerable wheels whereas this one has a uh, it steers by counter rotating the wheels like uh, like the rivian pickup truck that's pretty much what it does to to steer itself but the tool cart actually have a has a steering mechanism where you can turn and the front wheels and the rear wheels will actually uh, turn like you would expect of a car so there he's uh, pulling out a uh, huge uh, scoops of snow uh, just opening up uh, enough space for vehicles to move and uh, once you have the basic path opened up then uh, people start moving around then uh, it, it really makes things easier uh, it would warm up later on during the day so the little pieces of earth that you see there darker in color they would absorb the sun's rays and uh, the snow over there would start melting and turn to water so here i'm just taking a drive to see what the road conditions look like uh, there you have a major uh, track which runs from chicago all the way to seattle in washington state i hadn't heard any uh, trains go by but a short while after doing this video there were trains moving all be it at a slower speed the difficulty with the trains is that in case you get stuck or you find yourself in an emergency then uh, the road the road crews don't have a way to get to you so you put yourself in danger and i think it was a wise decision i think it, they took a decision uh, the railways not to have too many trains uh, scheduled to move on the tracks. I don't know that for a fact, it's just me uh, thinking that that's what happened because I did not hear many trains moving. So on the road you can see uh, a little bit of clearing has already been done. Uh, those ditches they're all covered in snow so they might look like they're not very deep but trust me you go in there with a vehicle even uh, a, a lighter UTV you will get stuck and here is the major highway which was uh, closed the uh, yesterday uh, the day before actually and you can see patches where the snow drifts melted on the road and then uh, they froze up when the road warmed up and cooled down so it's those darker areas underneath you have ice uh, I'm actually driving a Hummer H2, so it has a permanent all-wheel drive, so the vehicle is quite stable. But if you had like a rear-wheel drive vehicle, you step too hard on the gas, uh, you would definitely lose control. I mean, something like a Ford Mustang, you, it's very easy to lose traction and control of the rear wheels in such conditions. Uh, flight into the next uh, the closest commercial airport were closed until uh, that's from Tuesday to Friday noon so even as uh, the sky looks sketchy and uh, the ground conditions look like they've improved 
there are still no commercial flights coming to the closest airport that has commercial flight service which is about 50 miles from where i am and there you can see a green train that is stopped uh, i don't know for whatever reason but uh, when i looked closely i could see some drifts underneath uh, the cars so that tells me that it's been there for a while how long i have no idea but yeah it just tells me that it's been sitting there which makes sense because the nearest town is not too far it's just about maybe three miles from where the engine is sitting so if they had to uh, run into town to stay in a hotel keep warm and uh, get some rest while waiting on the weather conditions to improve uh, then that, that would actually make uh, perfect sense so you guys can see and I'm sure you notice that there are very few vehicles on the road I did go by a few uh, commercial vehicles trucks and uh, once I got into town I could see a few uh, oil filled uh, pickup trucks and this is coming back into town you can see that where you have trees where you have obstacles as opposed to open country uh, that's where you have the greatest accumulation of the snow drifts so i think they've uh, done quite a good job the city has done quite a good job uh, including uh, the gentleman with the bobcat they cleaned up quite a bit of the mess uh, and uh, already the roads are passable so that is uh, something good other parts still have lots and lots of snow so you can tell uh, it's fluffy light but as time goes on then they start losing moisture then you have the uh, ice lattice that is left behind and that's uh, pretty hard stuff and it takes a very very long time and high temperatures for it to melt so again you can see uh, very few people on the road uh, people are just getting out and about now and uh, the first order of business is usually to clear around your your house uh, shovel around your house shovel around your vehicles that way you can uh, have a means of mobility further out in the distance you can see the grader that is fitted with blades up front and uh, to the side and that is used for clearing out the county roads it is a very efficient means of doing it uh, it can cover great uh, distances over a short period of time So you see him going there he has two blades one up front and one on the side and uh, that's the great thing with some of the counties here in North Dakota uh, the county roads are very very well maintained uh, they keep them in very good shape so once more open areas very little snow and uh, wherever you have obstacles that slow down the speed of the wind then you have the uh, snow droplets that are uh, left on the ground and then they start piling up to form those huge and humongous uh, drifts so down there you can see the county guy he is continuing on his way opening up the road all the way up to the county line On this side where you have trees you can see everything slowing down with uh, lots and lots of snow that's been that has been dropped many times when you have a snowfall like this so late in uh, the season it tends to be really intense uh, 
I heard of in 19, I believe 1984, they had something similar in April, right here in North Dakota, and it was a lot, a lot of snow around the city of Minot. So already you guys can see how they, they've cleared out the area, opened up a lot of space. It already looks really great. So that's awesome. And uh, to operate the bobcat, you really need uh, practice. It looks easy, but you just have to practice, practice, practice. And the more you do it, the more the controls become like uh, second nature to you. You think of what you're doing and you just have that automation. Your hands and your feet do uh, execute your thought without you putting too much effort to it it's almost like walking when you start walking uh, your first few steps you <laughs> you stumble and then afterwards it just becomes uh, a reflex part of you and there we have the snow blower you know it blows the snow up 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 uh, turn on your pto and there you go that's how it works the shoot can be oriented to the left, to the right, straight behind you. So a skillful operator will always watch out where they are dumping the snow. That way you don't break somebody's windshield or break the glass to the home. So again, like I said, when it snows, it, it, it's very important that whoever is taking part in the cleaning operations has a rudimentary to good idea of uh, the area where they, they will be working. So this is uh, the rock saw, you can see not too much accumulated there because it's so tall. Uh, when the wind comes, hits the body, goes underneath. Uh, because of uh, that restriction, it picks up speed. So underneath is very, very clean. But right behind it, you see, it dumped a lot of snow. gonna see if we can jump in and uh, go get a little ride it will be it will be such a shame to <laughs> let all of this uh, new fresh snow go to waste <laughs> it seems like the perfect condition to a uh, perfect condition and perfect excuse to take the rocks out and play a little bit so here we have it uh, started I'm using the wide angle lens so it looks a little bit weird Trust me, that fan is spinning faster than it looks. Uh, some of the snow was drawn into the engine compartment, but nothing to worry about. So we can close that. I really enjoy the um, tires I have on now uh, they do pretty well in snow and also they help with the ground clearance that way I don't get uh, high centered when uh, I'm driving around in snow also the rocks are does pretty well with uh, in four wheel drive low range best part about it is I have that little heater so when I let it idle for a little bit, it doesn't get exactly like really hot hot. But uh, once you jump in and you start driving around, then the temperature picks up. But if you let it idle while it's warming up, you know, the temperature inside gets to a nice, not very comfortable uh, temperature, but it, it warms up. So it's at least better than being outside. And then you also have the cap that breaks the wind. So those two factors, even if you just sit in the rocks or with the engine idling, uh, you would be relatively comfortable. But once you start driving, uh, before too long, depending on your setup, you might have to actually turn down the heat. So that's the best part I like about uh, the hard caps cab. It really, really works and uh, extends the utility of your Mahindra Rocksaw. 
there I have it in four wheel drive low range and uh, I don't have any lockers so it's just the straight uh, low range you can see it was a bit sluggish taking off there's some snow inside like I said I don't have every single uh, little piece of uh, area where the air can come in sealed off so uh, I could use some tape seal it off or whatever but I always look forward to maybe one day I might say hey I need to take off maybe the doors maybe the roof for whatever reason uh, the cab was meant to be modular easily easy to take off uh, panels um, there are other cabs that you know they are pretty much like you mount it once and it's not meant to be taken on and off but uh, the hat caps cab is meant to be it's very modular easy to take panels off uh, but I don't do that quite often I haven't done it actually since I mounted my cab uh, that's how much I love it because whatever is inside I just lock the door with the key and uh, I have peace of mind of course somebody really determined they can break and get into the rock saw but you know it's just a um, deterrent it makes people uh, it keeps good people honest yeah unfortunately here they already cleared out much of the snow would have loved to play in, <laughs> in the snow but uh, there, there's still quite a bit of snow around so I decided to go driving and uh, did a little turn over there going around just so much fun playing in the snow with the rocks on if you want to spin it around then you probably have to stop shift it to two-wheel drive that way uh, the power goes to the rear wheels um, if you think you might get stuck four-wheel drive and uh, if you think you might really really get stuck then four-wheel drive low <laughs> there it was quite a high little ridge of snow and if you look underneath the rock saw it actually clears that uh, little high ridge and uh, I'm uh, really impressed normally such ridges would be the kind of thing that a regular vehicle once the belly hits uh, a snow ridge or bank like that it just lifts up the tires or the tires don't get enough pressure to to gain traction you know on the ground and uh, that becomes a problem but with the rock saw it has enough uh, ground clearance where the weight of the rock saw uh, rests on the tires and the tires have very good cleats and uh, those cleats they grab the snow pretty well So there I still continue pushing the rock saw a little bit into that bank seeing how much I can push it hoping not to get stuck uh, without lockers in little places like that you know once you have a little pile of snow in front of your tires or behind then as you spin the tires it just digs in deeper and deeper and deeper until you have to come with a shovel to level out the snow around your tires for a little bit that way you get some momentum and then uh, you can actually uh, move on so the engine easily puts out power uh, but the other thing you realize is uh, even after you let off the accelerator the rear wheel uh, both wheels have so much momentum uh, that is imparted to them that they keep spinning so bear that in mind if you have bigger tires and uh, you're doing burnout or whatever so there is the rock star. still had uh, some flurries of snow coming down Cab. 
nice and warm really cozy you could you just don't want to leave the cab it's so nice in there and cozy <laughs> very comfortable when the wind is out there howling and uh, your hands start getting cold you're like ah, I want to get back into the cab so the Roxo drives really really great doing great in the snow I think I need fender flares uh, those tires they stick out too much uh, without fender flares you put on some speed and you pick up some rocks they will shatter your uh, rear view mirror and uh, they're backing up I have some pretty nice uh, snow banks on the right and uh, the bobcat did a good job of clearing but the snow was so deep uh, wherever you had the snow drifts so they were, it was quite deep uh, very tall drifts and so you have uh, that impressive snow bank on the right or straight ahead on your screen Put it in four wheel drive and you can push back quite a bit there you go you guys can see that's some pretty deep snow there but the front tires have a very good grip so i was able to push back yeah the rocks are so much fun when it snows and you have all these snow banks to explore it's amazing And uh, sitting in the cab, you just want to stay there for for as long as you as you as you have a smile on your face because it's so nice and uh, warm. You don't have to put on too many layers, and uh, you don't even need gloves because the air inside is already warm. So it's really really comfortable. Uh, I think that's one of the best investments having a cab on the rock tour and also a heater because you never know when it's gonna get uh, cold even in the southern climates uh, at night you know some evenings are quite chilly and uh, you could also have a uh, box like mosquitoes that will uh, spend all day biting you let's say you're hunting that isn't fun having uh, mosquitoes and bugs chasing you whereas if you have a cab on your rock you just stay inside and uh, you could put some music and you know wait for your bait to uh, call the deer or the hogs or whatever it is that you hunt i used to have my power steering squeal quite a bit then i looked when it was operating and i noticed that the fluid level was a bit low so I topped it off and most most of the noise is gone but if I turn it lock to lock you know if I have it at the very end uh, all the way to the lock then it squeals a little bit uh, the four-wheel drive is quite impressive especially if the tires have grip If they don't it's uh, sketchy you can tell there's quite a bit of power being put to the ground but without grip you ain't going nowhere so uh, depending on the kind of wheeling that you do you might consider investing in a good set of lockers uh, get someone competent to have them installed maybe yourself uh, for me and the kind of use I put my rocks out to I really don't need to go as extreme as installing lockers. For me that uh, just adds a one more layer of complexity which uh, doesn't really uh, gain me much compared to the kind of uh, driving that I do with my Rockstar. Yeah, so that's the Roxor and uh, 
I had quite a bit of fun after everything was said and done <laughs> and uh, the snow was cleared so yeah those those two days were quite intense and uh, I'm glad so far when I went to town I didn't see any uh, like passenger vehicle in the ditch just one uh, case uh, set up which is like the uh, like the Kubota All right, guys, so that's what I had to share with you. A pretty uh, long-winded story about the crazy blizzard we had here in North Dakota. I'm really glad that uh, it's over and uh, we've cleared enough to where we can start going to town and hopefully uh, over the next uh, 24 hours, a lot of uh, things will return back to normal. It was also great that we didn't lose any power and. Uh, of course, I'm glad I have the rocks up with me to play around in the snow uh, before everything melts and is gone. Thanks for joining me. Consider subscribing to the uh, channel and hit the thumbs up button below if you enjoyed the video. Bye.